Good morning, and welcome to Leroy United Methodist Church. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. We have had a few technical challenges, but we are live now, and thank you for your patience with us. A few announcements as we begin our time together today. Next Sunday evening at 6 o'clock, we will be having a service of light in our, uh, on our church lawn by the Peace Pole and Peace Lantern. So everyone will have the opportunity to come and receive the International Peace Light and take it to your home for the Advent season. We also are excited to have Advent activity bags that are available to every household in our church and in our community. And these Advent activity bags include some at-home worship experiences, an Advent wreath uh, and candles for lighting throughout the Advent season, some craft ideas and such so that uh, we can make this season special in these times. So please register to receive an Advent activity bag. Let us know by tomorrow if you would like to have one of those for your household. Uh, you can pick those up next Sunday evening at the Service of Light. And if you are not able to come to that, we can arrange uh, for another time for pickup. We will have our fellowship time today via Zoom at 1015, so we encourage you to come and connect with one another uh, during that time. If you need the link, please send us a message and we'll get that to you. Special thanks to those who are participating in our worship service today. We have Ruth Halasco, who is our lay reader, Nancy Schley on the organ, and Rick Hawk is our tech uh, in the sound booth this morning. So let us prepare our hearts for worship as Ruth comes to lead us in the call to worship. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. The time for harvest is close at hand. What have you done with the gifts God has given you? We, we have brought, brought our, our gifts, gifts to the house of the Lord. Lord. Praise God for the gifts and for our opportunities for service that they represent. We, we praise, praise God for all the ways in which our lives have been blessed. Generous God, accept our gifts and our lives this day. Loving, Loving God, accept, accept our praise and gratitude. gratitude. Amen. Amen. The opening hymn for this morning is Praise to the Lord the Almighty.
gospel lesson for today is from Matthew 25, verses 14 through 30. For it is if, for it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the talent, five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents who came, also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and did not sow and gathering. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Please pray with me. Oh God, we thank you for the teachings of Jesus that help us to understand how we are to live and what life in your kingdom is like. Open our hearts today, O oh God, that we might hear your message, but not only hear it, that we might go and do what you have called us to do. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, throughout Jesus' ministry, he taught in parables. The Gospel of Matthew records 23 of these parables. Parables that poked and prodded and challenged Jesus' listeners. Those in the first century who were hearing them directly from him and those of us now in the 21st century who are reading and hearing them through scripture. With each successive parable in this Gospel of Matthew, the intensity is heightened as Jesus prepares his listeners for a time when he will no longer be with them. Now last week, we looked at the parable of the ten bridesmaids, and today we look at this final parable in the Gospel of Matthew. This is the last story that Jesus offers before his discourse on the judgment of nations uh, at the end of Matthew 25, which will be next week's text. After that, the remainder of the gospel is devoted to the events surrounding Jesus' death and resurrection. 
Now these parables that Jesus told are stories with layers. They have many layers. They have many facets of meaning. There are stories that can be heard in different settings in different ways. Many of these are stories that come with a warning. And if you believe that you know the meaning or the interpretation of the parable, well, you're likely mistaken. As I said last week, there can be many interpretations of parables, not just one. Now, to those of us who breathe the very air of capitalism that we have here in the United States, this week's story about the servants giving an accounting to their master could sound like a warning from Jesus to invest our money wisely, or at the very least, deposit it in the bank for some interest. But this story isn't really about money, of course. Money is the illustration that Jesus uses, but as always, the, the meaning is much deeper than mere cash or bank balances. The setting of this parable in Matthew's Gospel gives us some clue to that. You think about it. As Jesus is nearing his death, do you really think, do you really think that he is encouraging his disciples to invest their money well? <laughs> I don't imagine that that would really be his focus, especially at this point in his journey. So the story has to be about something more. Now, we sometimes interpret this story to be about talents. That's what the text says, the parable of the talents. Um, in a sense of like personal gifts or abilities that God expects us to use well. <laughs> of course, for, for the sake of the kingdom of God. Now, scholars will point out that the word talent, which was a unit of money in ancient times, came into the English language because of this very parable. <laughs> because of its interpretation. We use our talents um, and good things then happen. Um, if we use our talents, good things happen. And we see some amazing growth, both in us and in the kingdom of God. Now, if we bury those talents, we leave them unexercised, and then we might wind up out in the cold. The parable is about things like accountability and responsibility, putting our talents and our resources to good use. But I don't think that reading the story through that lens exhausts all of the meaning of this story either. Again, it's helpful for us to read this parable in light of where Jesus was on his journey. He's preparing to leave his disciples, knowing that there will be this long mean time until he returns. In the Gospels, there are passages where Jesus speaks with great love and reassurance as he's leaving his disciples. We love to hear those words, do not fear, in the Bible. But then there are these parables that challenge us and even warn us. The well-known gifted preacher and uh, professor of preaching, Fred Craddock, describes two types of parables. He said, those that offer surprise of grace at the end, and those that follow this direct course from cause to effect, as surely as the harvest comes from whatever is sown. He says there's no gifts or parties in those, but together these two types of parables present justice and grace, either of which can be distorted without the other. 
This parable, he says, is about justice and consequences. Enterprising or lazy servants and an anticipated reckoning when the one we await returns. So as Jesus is leaving his parting instructions, he uses those stories to direct the hearer's attention to the issues at hand, <laughs> to faithfulness, to preparedness, and risk. Now, if hyperbole is some sort of exaggeration for effect, then Jesus certainly makes his point with this story by using a sum of money that would have been astronomical, astronomical to his hearers. A talent, one talent was worth roughly 15 years of wages to the average worker. Yes, one talent was 15 years of wages to the average worker. Can you imagine that? <laughs> I wonder how much it would take for us today to understand a sum of money that much when, when even we hear things like a trillion dollars in debt and it doesn't really have that much of an impact on us. <laughs> many years, many generations could have lived off of all of the talents that are mentioned in this story. And the man doesn't give them equally to all three of the servants, but each according to his ability. The word translated as ability is dynamis or power. So we think of it each according to his power. We're intrigued to think about the power within each servant, within each one of us, and how we use that or how we bury that. Not just talent, but power. One layer of meaning in the story addresses what's going on in the third servant. His, his commitment, his courage, his worldview, if you will, is, is he lazy or stupid or is he immobilized by fear? Now, some might say that he was all of those things. And the lesson that we can learn from the story about money and loans is to put our gifts out into circulation. This parable compares the use of all that God has given us, not just specific talents, but all that we have and all that we are, and it compares it with the use of a financial loan in order to make a profit for the investor. If we hoard and if we hide our money, it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Just like those in business, the whole point of money is for it to be used and spent and circulated to make more money. <laughs> what God has given us, ourselves, our lives, our faith, our possession, our gifts, is given in order for us to spend it and put it out into circulation. Our lives are to be expended in God's service becoming a source of further blessing for others and for ourselves. Now, as valuable as that particular insight might be, I think there's still yet another meaning. I think we can also read in this parable a very important lesson about how to live. Again, in that meantime, before Jesus returns. Yes, courage and generosity and good stewardship of all of our resources are certainly a part of the picture, but the big picture is one of a transformed life as individuals and as a church. When Matthew wrote this gospel, he wasn't necessarily talking about the risk of losing money but rather the risk of the public expression of the gospel. 
whether those hearers of the gospel would keep it safely tucked away in some secure context, or whether they would let it loose in a broader world among all of the nations. Anticipating Jesus' return meant rejecting that lure of security or um, rejecting fear or the logic of fear and intimidation and, and taking a risk, a risk of discipleship with all of its dangers and all of the pearls that come with that. This is stewardship beyond money. It's really stewardship of the gospel itself. Could it be that we bury our faith could it be that we bury our relationship with God, the gospel itself, or at least tuck it away in some safe and hidden place about one of the desert fathers from early Christianity when people were driven by faith out into the wilderness to live with very little material comfort and then would experience tremendous spiritual riches? And one day, a young monk went to Abba Joseph, the story is told anyway, and he asked him what more he could do since he was already doing some fasting and already doing some praying and some work, mostly weaving baskets. And the holy man responded by raising his hands. And then fire shot out of his fingers and he responded to the young man and said this great challenge, why not become totally fire? Why not become totally fire? This parable stirs within us our spirit, but, but how well does it describe our faith as individuals and as a church? Are we each going along in our own little world, doing some fasting and some praying and some working, but are we catching fire? Are we catching fire? Is our faith life more about reassurance and security? Or is it about risk-taking, openness, and courage, and the unimaginable abundance to which all of those virtues lead? Are we willing to step out, or are we hiding the gospel, tucking it away in some undisclosed location. Are we as a church? Are we as individuals? Are we willing to take a risk? Are we willing to let the gospel loose in this world? This world that right now so desperately needs to hear it. Are you burying your faith? Are you keeping it all to yourself? Or are you willing to risk sharing the gospel? May we all be such good stewards of the gospel that we too hear the words, well done, good and faithful, good and trustworthy servant. Amen. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, I invite you to share your joys and concerns in the comments below so that we might be praying with you and for you. A few that I would like to share among our community of faith here is certainly we had a great joy last week with our food drive sponsored by the youth group and the help of our Cub Scout uh, pack. We collected more food this year than we have in any of the previous years, and the folks at the Lodi Good Samaritan Food Pantry are grateful um, because they're giving out so much more food in this time than they have in the past. We also want to be in prayer for um, Cloverleaf School District, all of the teachers and students and the parents who are now doing school virtually uh, with all the challenges that that brings. So hold them in your prayers, uh, as well as all who are affected by COVID. Uh, we have a few of our college students who are currently in quarantine. They've not tested positive, but they're in quarantine because of exposure. And Nina Buchin, 
um, has actually tested positive and is pretty sick right now. So please hold Nina in your prayers. Also, Nancy Schley has asked for prayers for her sister, Lori, and her husband, Charlie. Um, both are experiencing some pretty significant health issues right now, and in the midst of COVID, that brings additional challenges. And also, I'd ask that you pray for my brother-in-law, Gary, who had surgery this week and is, uh, has a long recovery ahead of him. Again, we invite you to share your joys and concerns in the comments so that we might pray with you and for you. Let's take a moment to center our hearts in God's presence, and we'll have the pastoral prayer and the Lord's Prayer. O oh God of all times and all places, you have always been and you forever will be. You are surrounding us. You, you hem us in. You are behind us and before us and you lead us in all circumstances. Your presence is with us and it's as close as our very breath. Oh God, we thank you for creating us, for loving us, for calling us by name. Today, oh God, we rest in that assurance. And yet you call us beyond that security, beyond that safety, to take risks and to share our lives of faith with others. Give us your spirit, O oh God, empower us, embolden us, light us on fire to be good stewards of all that you have given us, not just our resources, but the gospel itself, that we might share your love in all that we do and all that we say. We thank you so much, O oh God, for your son, Jesus, for his teaching, for these parables that he taught, for the ways he has told us about your kingdom. And of course, for the hope that we have in him, for the salvation that we have because of his life, his death, and his resurrection. O oh God, give us your peace in these anxious and crazy times. Bring healing to our nation. Bring healing to all who are ill. God, help us to care for one another and love one another. Bring peace to all who are grieving and comfort them as they can't be with loved ones in this time or all who have experienced death. Oh God, we ask for your peace that passes all understanding to fill us and help us that with that peace, that we can share your peace with others. For all of these things, O oh God, and all the things that we have mentioned aloud and those that we hold in our hearts, we give you thanks. And we pray them all, claiming hope in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We do appreciate your continued stewardship and support of the church in the midst of these times so that we can be a hopeful presence in our community. The offering that I have placed and Ruth has placed and others have placed in, in this um, offering plate today represent all of your offerings, those that have been received online and those that have come in the mail. And we ask, um, we will ask God to bless them that we would be good stewards with the resources that we have. Ruth will come and lead us in the offertory prayer. Please join me. God, our provider, your word creates our life and strength. 
Everything we have is a gift from your open hand. Guide us by your Spirit to be diligent and faithful stewards of all that you entrust to our care. May we not bury our gifts or fearfully hoard resources. Fill our hearts with trust so that we can experience your joy in giving. May our congregation show your generosity through our mission in the world. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. The closing, sorry, the closing hymn for today is Take My Life and Let It Be. Please join in. Amen. Amen.